When anybody comes to Dubai, they already expect and know that Dubai is famous for fantastic and iconic structures. When you first come to Dubai, the first thing you're going to see when you come off Sheikh Zayed Road and you're coming from the airport is this fantastic structure that is so futuristic um, that really it stands out amongst all the other structures in Dubai. So as far as really setting the pathway in, in where Dubai is going, it's um, really a, a, one of the leading uh, countries in the world for developing smart cities and future technology. And what is unique about the Museum of the Future is it's, it's focused on new innovative technology and things that we know now and things that we don't know, you know, what's coming um, ahead of us in the next few years, uh, as opposed to other museums which look typically at the past and, you know, what has been. So with uh, that sentiment, I think it, it really, for the next um, years coming, it's going to really focus uh, Dubai as one of the leading technology uh, countries in the world. And the Museum of the Future really brings all of that together in terms of where the country is going. It draws many, many people into the country. So jointly with the Expo, it, it, it's really the first thing that you're going to be coming to and then you leading on to the Expo, which is going to be coming in October for the next six months. So these two things together really show um, Dubai is a, a future uh, fit uh, country. It's got a long future ahead of it. It uh, shows all the different technologies that's coming in uh, in the future. When the project was conceived um, by uh, Killer Design, uh, the architects behind it, um, they really wanted to design something that was um, a very challenging engineering to push the boundaries of, of what we know. A lot of projects in the past have been in, in much more of a simple form. Or let's say, you know, we, Dubai is very well known for the high-rise buildings. Um, the museum um, in itself is not a, a, an outstandingly high building. Um, it's, it's more horizontal, um, but it is of such a challenging form um, that uh, uh, it really compelled engineers and architects that they wanted you know, to be associated with this type of structure. From a fabricator standpoint, to be associated with one of the most engineeringly challenging structures really um, puts a stamp in terms of uh, an organization that can take on an extremely challenging project. Museum of the future, you know, you can see that the shape of the uh, itself it is a very complex. You can see, you can see by going to see, and also uh, in that very unique is the calligraphy. You can see that by seeing that it's a calligraphy, that Arabic letters you are writing all these things. Eh? Achieving that and all, it is not easy. It is very, very complex, very difficult. Eh? Okay. And in this most, uh, most com uh, complex part is the communication. See, there is a lot of traders uh, parallelly where to work. The structure itself it is a very unique and a complex structure. And parallel that, uh, this uh, cladding work and MEP work and electrical, all each and everything we need to uh, parallelly where to work and we have to communicate to each other. So, so this all happened based on the, with the help of the BIM and with the beam structure. So parallelly we did that one. And in this we did even 4D also. Okay, first time we did. We, any other projects, we, so far we did up to 3D only. And this is a project especially we did 4D. And we succeeded in this 4D also. When we see um, fantastic examples of projects that can have demonstrable examples of how they've saved time, saved money, and improved um, the, the life cycle of the project itself. Um, these are 
a, a really good proponents for other companies to follow suit. Um, the AEC industry itself is also complex, so it's not just one, uh, you know, one certain set of contractors, engineering companies and contractors, it's a very multi-faceted industry. So we have multitudes of different um, uh, subcontractors in the, um, like the construction chain. And, and to really be effective, everybody has to adopt um, the capability to a certain degree. Um, so you can have companies that have BIM-enabled technology, uh, but then if they're interfacing with subcontract trades that are still using traditional methods, the process uh, breaks down somewhat. So really to make a big impact, um, as many stakeholders and players in, in that whole construction life cycle should be on board with the ability to um, take 3D technology or BIM or at least interpret the data or leverage the data out of uh, the initial virtual model that's created. Now, since we are using the BIM, we know everything. Now, we are seeing all, all not only steel, not only all, all stakeholders and models we are, uh, we are getting in the IFA format, we are uh, superimposing in our models, then we are uh, seeing before that, before starting the generation of the fabrication drawing itself, eh? we are seeing all the, all the issues and uh, we are overcoming all these issues and uh, a lot of questions also uh, reduced and we are uh, saving a lot of time. So more, more, most of the time, uh, earlier we used to wait, we'll, we'll raise RFI by using 2D drawings or some snaps. It will go to consultant, client, and it will come all. It will take minimum two to three weeks. Uh, now, nowadays, it's not like now by seeing the uh, model uh, BIM, by using the BIM, it is hardly maximum in the days, within uh, two days or three days, or within one week maximum, we're getting all the solutions. If any issues are there, also we're raising to all the concerned parties, and in uh, a uh, matter of uh, days, we are resolving all the issues. I think there's also a misnomer on, you know, it requires an investment. Uh, so a lot of these small trades uh, perhaps don't have the capital or think they don't have the capital to invest in technology. Um, as we heard earlier from Eversendai, the savings that they have made has dramatically improved uh, their outlook on the projects that they can take on board, as well as um, a saving within their own environment in terms of not having to pay you know for mistakes and, and also being able to commit on the schedules that they've been originally awarded on for winning the contract. Um, with the subcontractors if they follow suit they can see that that investment in the early phases will actually start to pay off very quickly for them. So. Investment in technology is also an investment in their future to survive in what is now quite a competitive and also uh, a challenging market, uh, not just within uh, the UAE, but globally. We can see there's a lot of pressures on the industry. Um, so I think when people start to really um, distill that information down, that you know technology is, is actually going to be of benefit, that the ones that start to invest are the ones that have the better chance of surviving uh, in the industry and also improving the way that we work in construction as a whole. <laughs>